Hello friends, welcome back to Red, Red Engineering Tutorial. So the topic is sequential logging. So the previous video I have discussed why we need tracking and what are the basic information we, we have to track the target. Okay. So in this video we will discuss one of the important technique that we employ to track the target. Okay. So there are mainly three techniques we use. One is sequential logging, other is the conical scanning, the third one is the monopole stacking. Okay, so here now in this video, we will see what is sequential logging. Okay, so now what is sequential logging? Okay, so sequential logging is a technique wherein the direction of the beam of the antenna this is the antenna here. Okay, the direction of the beam of the antenna is switched between two different positions. Okay, this is position A, this is the position B, this is the tracking axis. See, here, here is my target. Okay, here is my target and here is my target again. Okay, and these are the two different beam axes and beam positions. Right, so here what happens is that strength of the echo, tar echo from the target will fluctuate at the switching rate. Right, so whenever if you see here, if this is on the tracking axis, suppose let's say it is on the tracking axis then my voltages I am receiving at the position A and position B are both are equal when it is on the tracking axis okay if not what happens is here whenever it is not on the tracking axis suppose let's say it is on the A, A side the target is on the A side then if I project if I project these two beams here at the B side I don't have any target so there is a voltage difference here this is same volt let's say if this is 5 volt this is 5 volt the, the, this voltage is same, but here due to the echo signal we are getting from the target at position A, our signal rate has increased. Signal has increased, let's say it is equal to 10 volt. Okay, so that means this is at the position A, so my voltage at the beam A is increased. So the difference between this target position will give the reference direction of the angle of error. Okay, we can calculate this angle of error. Now, what happens is this for, for this thing the difference whenever we calculate the voltage difference here that gives the angle of error this provides us the angle of error okay the what what we do using this angle of error that that is the important case here okay for that thing what we use what we use is this angle of error we need to make it as zero the angle of error should be zero so that what happens is Whenever I adjust this antenna so that my angle of error is 0 and the difference suppose this might be 5 volt, this might be 10 volt. The difference is minus 5 volt, right? This is 10 volt, this is 5 volt, and the difference is 5 volt. The sign of the difference also plays an important role in sequential logging. Okay? Because if it is positive sign, the antenna shifts the beam to one side, clockwise or anti-clockwise. If it is negative, the antenna shifts the beam to the other counterclockwise okay depending upon the sign and also the depending upon the angle of error this sequential lobing is taking place okay now this is the this gives angle of angle of error what the, the difference in the voltages they give me the what velocity change in the velocity okay that means I can measure the angular displacement of the target okay now this is about the sequential lobing technique the only thing we do is we, we perform or we generate two beam positions and we sequentially scan them using the antenna beams. Then what happens is at one point we get the we get the target at one point we, we won't we won't find any target. The point at which where we found the target will have the difference in the voltages than when the target is on the actual axis. At that time the difference between these two beams, whichever there, they gives us the angular displacement of the target. In that case, what we do is we calculate the angle of error between them, and that error is the it's a one coordinate system, right? I'm not going for two coordinate system. For two coordinate system, you need four sequential beams. Okay, so this gives me the two positions angle wherever I'm getting an error. Then I'll give it to the mechanical steering, a motor which we are using for which to steer these beams that angle I'll give and also the direction I'll provide. In that direction, what it does is, is it, it tracks the, what it, it moves the position of the beam so that again, the target will be on the tracking axis. So the entire thing, what we have learned is, 
whenever we are tracking a target that should be on the tracking axis line of sight should be maintained then only we can get the exact information of the target whenever the target is moving away from the target axis we need to calculate the error and also we need to make sure that the angle of error should be zero at each and every time so for that thing we need to scan the position of the target okay so this is how with the sequential looping works now as i told you in the earlier case there are three techniques right so if the sequential looping is a good one then there is no need for us to go with the other two other two techniques but here what happens is the sequential looping also suffers some limitations that limitation is first thing the angle accuracy which you are measuring that is not better than the size of the antenna beam width that means this antenna beam width which we are which we are giving this is the angle of beam width here this beam width is is more compared to the angle of error that means the only thing which which what we do is whenever we are considering the beam beam positions or beam width here there should always be the pencil beam this is called the pencil beam this is broad beam this is broad beam right okay most of the times we try to use the pencil beam only but in such cases where we cannot calculate the error we cannot get the error less than that of the beam position then that will be the limitation of the sequential loading okay sequential loading suffers with that limitation the angle of error which we are getting is not better than the angle of beam width then there is no what there is no accurate information of the target and accurate tracking is not done whenever it is a ang angle of error is not more than this other okay so this is the first limitation the second limitation is that the target position accuracy can be far better better than the antenna beam width okay we, we are not getting the angle but also the position is also not better than that of the antenna beam width these two are the limitations of the sequential knobbing okay and this type of technique this type of tracking technique it is used in ground based anti craft fire control systems fire control radars okay Where whenever you consider ground based anti craft fire control substations there we use the tracking radars okay tracking radar the technique is used as sequential logging okay and also airborne interception radar it provides the directional information of homing in aircraft okay that means it provides this direction not the accurate accurate thing accurate position of the target but it provides the direction of the target okay so this is about sequential logging in the next video we'll see what is conical scanning that's all for this video thank you